Yo, what's up? Matt here at the American Edge and the Guild of Professional Sharpeners. And I have this idea, I've had this idea for some time. So this is me kind of airing this out with you. And um, let me know what you think about it. Let me know in the comments. And if there's anything crazy about this idea, as in like, either way, whatever, just let me know. I'm kind of curious. Uh, I've already sort of pulled, the, I've already pulled the trigger on it though. So if I'm gonna learn the hard way, then we'll just learn the hard way together. Um, but anyway, the idea is getting a lathe in my sharpening shop. So before we, um, before we talk more about the lathe, let's just talk about the problems that I'm hoping I can solve, explore solving with the lathe. So first thing is all of the wheels. Um, there's, there's a lot of wheels that we want to use in the sharpening space. CBN wheels, I made some notes here. Right now I'm interested in those rounded wheels for doing serrations that Cliff has and there's some others out there. Um, th those look really promising. And then there's like, uh, I already mentioned the CBN wheels, uh, Scotch-Brite wheels, paper wheels, leather wheels, felt wheels. Um, there, there's a lot, right? And it's kind of exciting and I'd like to be able to use them. Um, some issues that we encounter when we want to use wheels are one, uh, there are many white num and, um, this has just come up a lot, right? A lot of people are pursuing this. Uh, one is the arbor size, like, like how big that hole is in the middle of the wheel that you get. And then you kind of need to hope that either that is, um, the same size as a tool you can spin it on or bigger. And if it's bigger, then you can get by these reducers to bring it down to the size of whatever machine you're bringing, you're putting it on. Uh, but diameter is just one aspect of it. The other thing, which I've encountered on some machines here, got a half speed grinder here. I have a variable speed grinder in the back is that the wheel is either, uh, if it's too thin, it goes too far onto the arbor and then that nut won't tighten it. If it's too fat, too thick, then you, the arbor is too small and you can't even get it on. So it's almost like uh, there's always a problem, right? It's, uh, it was, it's like shocking if you buy a wheel, the arbor matches the machine you want to put it on and you just put it on and it spins up. It's almost surprising if you can get that to happen. Uh, the other thing is, so beyond the arbor, now it's like what speed do you want to spin it? Um, I, I, uh, I do have a buffer, which is a really fast machine, like a full speed grinder. Uh, I'm not using that in here. A half speed grinder is plenty fast. I wouldn't, I'd like to go even slower than that. Uh, but the variable speed grinder in the back doesn't go slower than the, the half speed grinder. So the only thing that spins slower than that I can think of is the Tormek. Uh, but there's a huge range there between 90 RPM and 1175 RPM. And if you want to spin something in the middle of that range, you, you have like, how do you do it? You can draw the sewing machine motor, but then you kind of have to build out like your arbor and like get like, it's all like, there are other ways, but it's, it's hard, right? There's nothing off the shelf to solve that problem. Um, that's so, so then, so RPM, right? Then the wheel you get, you want to be able to put it on a machine that spins at a speed that you want to use it at. Um, I already talked about the diameter length and then running true. Um, the, what if that means like the wheel uh, wobbles when you run it or like if you put something on it, it chatters. Uh, so the generally, like the more you spend on a machine, the tighter the tolerances, the better the bearings um, and the less you spend on the machine, which is a tendency of us to try to pursue spending less. Uh, sometimes you may end up with a machine that isn't running totally true or the wheels aren't totally true either. Uh, anyway, it's just to say there's, there can be kind of a battle to get your, your, your wheels to run true, especially when you're running them fast. Um, I did just think of another one, but it escaped me. If it comes back to me, I'll, I'll mention it. Okay, so here's all these wheels. Oh, the other thing here, it was uh, angle control. Uh, so being able to jig it out so that you can control the bevel angle. The Tormek is a great solution for that. There are some others on the market. Cutter Master has a bar, similar style. Uh, and Cutter Master will actually have that variable speed too. So you can get that in the middle. Now you're just limited to Arbor uh, size to put a wheel on there that, uh, or a variety of wheels that uh, would work for that. Um, but anyway, the point I was getting out there was like having a machine that's jigged out so that you can um, pre preferably go across several different grits without needing to change 
your machines out uh, and you can have it jigged out. So if I'm at 15 degrees on this wheel, I can go to this wheel, I'm at 15 degrees, I can go to this wheel, I'm at 15 degrees, right? Like that's, the, that would be sweet. Even the cutter master, you can get two wheels out of the same jig. Okay, so then uh, this, all of this is like, uh, why, why, not, why not use a lathe? Uh, so um, if you're not familiar with the lathe, the lathe is a machine you'll see in a machine shop uh, next to a mill or a CNC and some other things. And the point of the lathe is to, it spins things and then you have a tool post and you can cut uh, round things and you can shape them, cut them to size, put threads in them, drill holes in whatever you want, right? So that's, it's a very common tool in a machine shop. I did so a little bit of searching and I can't see anybody in the sharpening space using a lathe. And um, if you find anybody, if you know nobody who is, like put them in touch with me because I'd like to uh, grow the network of people who are exploring this idea. Um, but even at the ba most basic functions, how could a lathe benefit a sharpener? It would be to be able to fabricate in-house all the arbor adapters so that when you get a wheel, uh, whatever size arbor it is, you can make it fit whatever machine you have. So you could build your own Arbor adapters in-house to the thousandths of an inch in diameter and have them fit perfectly. Uh, and that would be great. Like that would be an advantage. I have my uh, variable speed grinder. It's like spaced out with washers, but the washers aren't perfect. So there's chatter. So I had to bolt it. It's, it's like, it would be nice to have like a perfectly sized machined uh, Arbor adapter spacer in that case to get the wheel right where it needs to be. All right, but let's take it the next next step further. Not not only just building arbor adapters or even arbors for uh, the machines that you have. What about uh, actually spinning a grinding wheel on a lathe? Uh, and some advantages you have there are that a lathe is going to spin very s slow, relatively, and you can even trick it out with a VFD. So you have. Uh, uh, variable frequency drive on a three-phase motor so you have uh, full control from uh, like less than a Tormac to faster than a half-speed grinder, right? Like you could dial in exactly the RPM on uh, on that machine. If you get a big enough one, you could, all of our wheel, the biggest wheels we run are in the eight-inch zone. So if you have a big enough lathe, you could fit an eight-inch wheel and any smaller one on the lathe. Now I do, I mentioned this in the guild and Scott was like, yeah, you just don't want grinding dust or uh, powder falling onto your ways, your, your, um, your bench ways or bench, the ways. Anyway, so uh, yeah, but I, that's, that's awesome, brilliant, totally get that. Uh, but I think we can solve that with laying a cloth or something down on the ways while we're doing grinding. You could also slip a little tray under the wheel um, so that uh, it's running you know, moist anyway, and that'll catch a lot of it. And you could have dust collection in addition to that. So um, I see ways, I, totally valid. I think we can, I think we can still accommodate it. Um, I haven't seen anyone doing it though, so I don't know what else I'm missing. Um, and then the other thing is there with the, the, the lathe has a, a tool post control. So you can, you can have a lot of precision on how you move a tool post relative to the spinning shaft. So uh, in my mind, anyway, I could build something that mounts to the, the tool post area and uh, have a bar, sort of like a Tormac thing that spans the whole machine. So if I, in my mind here, uh, just so you know what I got was a, a South Bend 9, nine inch by 30 inch machine. So I'm wondering if I can fit three uh, wheels in that span, uh, build a, a rod, so I have angle control. I can set the angle using that jig that Tormac sells and uh, uh, grind on one wheel and then immediately go to the other and finish it on the third. So I could do like roughly, you know, something like a hundred grit wheel for, for shaping the edge, a thousand grit for refining the bevel, and then maybe a leather or felt or something, whatever, to, to remove the burr. So uh, at any speed I want, um, on whatever wheel I'm working on in either direction, right? So it just seems, it seems like there's just this ton of possibility that lies in that. Um, so I'm excited to pursue it. Um, some downsides of a lathe. First off, upfront cost. Uh, and um, I was starting to look in the Grizzly catalog, benchtop lathes, like for something that would fit an eight inch wheel, you're, you're, you're over two, you're in the 2000 plus, uh, range to get a benchtop lathe um, 
that way. As I was looking, I, I found some older machinery um, and I'm going to end up with a 9 by 30 inch lathe delivered for about four grand, which is certainly real money. And um, uh, I don't want to ignore that. The other thing is that after you've been running a sharpening business for a while, um, as I think as you'll see, like you, you run a business for a while, the business, business generates money. It doesn't feel as scary to put money back into the business. Um, so uh, that is a thing. Second thing is space. Uh, for the, like the bench shop lathes aren't huge. Uh, I have a, a straight knife grinder over here and that machine is going to find a new home and I'm going to, I could could have put a bench top lathe right here. What I'm going to end up doing is pulling all of this out and putting uh, my, the lathe in that area. So that's definitely a significant amount of space. Um, and and then the, it's going to be heavy too. So the other, like if you're, it obviously wouldn't be a solution for like, a, um, I say obviously, but like there used to be mobile machinists. So like you could, uh, anyway, it's probably going to be fixed in place. Okay, here's some other upsides though, right? Like, and one thing uh, John in the guild mentioned to me is that uh, even if this dream of mine doesn't pan out, I still have a lathe on my homestead and the skill set, you know, I, I have a, a budding skill set of, of using a lathe. I've used some in a machine shop at work and a machine shop at a maker space. So I've done a little bit of lathe work, but um, this would be doing more, right? So I'd have uh, this tool on my homestead where I could do that work. And the other one other thing that Grant mentioned was that, again, even if like all of this is an epic fail, uh, by investing in a nice piece of machinery, it's going to retain its value. And if I need that space back, I can sell the machine and probably get um, what I put into it back. So that kind of helps, you know, calm my nerves. Uh, I did. Uh, it was it was kind of abrupt how I found this, and then uh, just kind of seemed like the perfect thing. And somebody was driving. It's in Connecticut, but he had somebody driving to Portland, Maine. So I'm on the way. So shipping was kind of like reduced and um, I was like, yeah, I'm just gonna do it. Okay, so here's the deal. If you would like to come along for this journey, if you have any feedback on this idea of using a lathe in a sharpening shop, uh, let me know in the comments. But I would like to um, continue to, I'd actually like to use this as motivation to put more content out on YouTube. So do me a solid, let me know if you're interested. Uh, that'll be motivation for me to make videos like this. And then uh, also um, make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you may or may not get a notice uh, when I put new videos out. And also maybe get on my email list because I intend to communicate uh, this project by email as well. So I'll have a link to this stuff in the description. And um, okay, that's it. Thanks. Hope it works out. Cheers.